Now we move to chronic hypertension with or without superimposed preeclampsia. Chronic hypertension is diagnosed as blood pressure elevation either before 20 weeks gestation or prior to the onset of pregnancy. Here's our case. A 35-year-old multigravity is seen in the outpatient clinic for her first prenatal visit. I want you to notice the maternal age. With preeclampsia, more likely to be a young woman. With chronic hypertension, more likely to be an older patient. And here we have a 35-year-old. She is 12 weeks gestation with a blood pressure 155 over 95. Onset of blood pressure elevation, first trimester, chronic hypertension. Now, in her case, the chronic hypertension was diagnosed five years ago, so she had a pre-pregnancy diagnosis. She's been treated with oral nifedipine, a urine dipstick protein, 2 plus, so she's already got renal involvement. A recent 24-hour urine protein showed 1.2 grams of protein. Is that significant? Over 300 milligrams. Yes, it is. Her creatinine clearance is 85. Now, what is a normal creatinine in a non-pregnant woman? I should say creatinine clearance. 100 to 125. In a pregnant woman, it should be 150 to 180. This woman has less than half of that. Serum creatinine is 1.2, so she's got chronic hypertension with significant renal involvement. No headache, no visual changes. Diagnosis for chronic hypertension. Gestation less than 20 weeks or pre-pregnancy with sustained elevation of blood pressure. There may or may not be proteinuria depending on the degree of involvement, but the key finding is when did the hypertension occur? Now we have chronic hypertension which has a good prognosis and that's typically patients who have mild elevation of blood pressure anywhere between 140 over 90 to 179 over 109 and no end organ damage, no renal involvement, no involvement of the eyes, no involvement of the heart, left atrial hypertrophy and these patients can often be managed conservatively and do well. Poor prognosis. The main organ systems we're concerned with is small vessel disease in the kidneys, the eyes, and the heart. If she has renal disease, creatinine over 1.4. If she has evidence of retinopathy from long-standing hypertension. If she has left ventricular hypertrophy because of the heart having to work against this high uh, diastolic blood pressure. That's not so good. But the worst prognosis, uncontrolled hypertension. 250 over 140, or chronic hypertension with superimposed preeclampsia. Half of our maternal mortalities at Loma Linda University Medical Center have occurred in patients with chronic hypertension who already have vessel involvement and weakening, and then superimposed preeclampsia, and these patients, they blow out, blow out their brains. Intracerebral hemorrhage. That's a bad outcome. So, how do we make a diagnosis of chronic hypertension superimposed preeclampsia? I'm using PIH as an abbreviation for preeclampsia. She already has chronic hypertension. Blood pressure, instead of coming down, is going north. It's going higher. Proteinuria, either she had none and is developing it, or she's got it and it's getting worse. Chronic hypertension superimposed preeclampsia. How do we manage these patients? If it is uncomplicated chronic hypertension, and if her blood pressure is less than 100 diastolic, I'll even stop her antihypertensives and just follow her conservatively. If you need to use a medication, we will use alpha-methyldopa or Aldamet, not because it is the uh, most effective medication, but has a track record of safety in pregnancy. We'll look for serial ultrasounds for fetal growth. Is there intrauterine growth restriction? And we'll do NSTs, AFIs after 30 weeks. If she develops superimposed preeclampsia, blood pressure going uh, the wrong direction, protein getting worse, then that would be indication for delivery. If she's uncomplicated chronic hypertension, 40 weeks and let's get her delivered. I don't want to wait for superimposed preeclampsia to develop. Here's a couple of good board questions. What 
antihypertensive medicines should never be used in pregnancy. The first one is angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors. And the reason is fetal renal failure. So avoid those, stop them if she's pregnant. And diuretics, because diuretics, particularly if they're started during pregnancy, decrease the intravascular volume and then decrease the placental perfusion. If she is already on diuretics prior to the pregnancy, that initial decrease in intravascular volume has already taken place. But particularly with ACE inhibitors, we want to stop that as early as possible and not use them during pregnancy. Caution for ACE inhibitors in the first trimester. If there is chronic hypertension superimposed preeclampsia, we want to treat this patient aggressively. Prevent convulsions, intravenous magnesium sulfate. We want to lower the blood pressure to bring the diastolic between 90 and 100 and induce labor. Regardless of gestational age, we don't need to have a cesarean. Oxytocin amniotomy may be appropriate, but you don't want to sacrifice the mother and her health. And that is the end of chronic hypertension with or without superimposed preeclampsia.